Hello and welcome to another episode of What's Inside. Today we're looking at Pinata Party. Uh, this is from A Games, uh, made by nope, can't pronounce that name. Retails for about twenty bucks. Um, takes about half an hour to play. Two to four players. Uh, I think that's ages eight, eight and up. It's supposed to be a pretty simple game. Um, it's the game of cultural appropriation. This was put out by a company in Budapest. A Games, uh, Kiado A Games. Um, so if uh, you're mad about the theme and you want to scream cultural appropriation, send your letters to Hungary. Uh, I'm sure they'll appreciate it and then ignore them. This came out in 2015. Um, it's uh, supposed to be a really fun game actually. So let's open it up, see what we've got. Um, on the back, it does have instructions or a little blurb in. Uh, three different languages, so it's fun for the whole family in many different countries. And Ages 8 and Up says it's probably a fairly simple game. But let's get the cellophane off here. There we go. That's some nice strong plastic wrap. They get an A for that. Nice, nice cover box. Uh, box is okay, nothing fancy. Um, a little better than a puzzle box, honestly. All right, so here's our instructions in three different languages. Uh, I speak English, obviously, so let's take that one and take a look at it real quick. So it's just a, a little... Um, like a tile type base game. They look like Starburst candies, so I'm weirdly hungry for candy right now. Uh, but that's it, it's only like four pages long. It's not a complex game, it seems very simple. So, all right, um, it would've been nice if everything had been, you know, in some sort of plastic bag or something. But it looks like they just threw everything in here. This is a brand new game, so. Uh, we got wood tiles that look like Starburst candies. Uh, represent the different colors in a Ziploc bag. Everything else is just haphazardly tossed in here. So let's get this stuff out and see what we've got here. Alright, uh, we got some stickers for those tiles. Um, they're pretty cheap. They look like they came out of somebody's printer. Uh, very thin uh, you're, if you center these wrong, they're going to rip. Uh, try and take them back off. So, I wouldn't even bother. It's all color-coded. But they're, they're garbage stickers. Alright, so let's see what, what all we've got here. It's got a border pieces, it looks like. We've got some character tokens that probably should have been polybagged. So let's get the box out of the way and start with this mess. All right, so we've got border pieces that go around it, obviously. Um, thickness is good. We'll give them that. Uh, they're numbered, so it has to go in a specific order to go around the board. Uh, these are probably important, so it's probably a score tracker or something like that. So, yeah, it's, uh, it's a pretty decent size. Uh, yeah. So then we've got these tiles, which are two-sided. These are pretty nice. It's decent thickness, nice quality. Uh, not quite as thick as some of the other games we've looked at, but definitely not the thinnest I've ever seen. Definitely a step in the right direction. So those are pretty nice. So far, I'm impressed with the tiles. Uh, maybe not the haphazardness with, with which they've all been tossed in. But, you know, um, seem to be decent quality. Uh, these are numbered on the back. So, looks like there's eight or nine of them. Yeah, eight. Alright, and then we've got a picture of a pinata on one side and some kids on a teeter-totter on that side. Don't know what that means. Um, then we've got this piece which looks like it's uh, 
Got some kind of scoring thing on it. Obviously, that because it is multilingual, that when that happens, it tend to keep the the cards and tokens incredibly simplistic, so that um, everybody can understand them. So, okay, so these have different backings. All right, so let's let's look at these candy ones, which is what this one is. So let's look at those first. Um, yeah, I don't know what what any of this means because I've never played this game. I bought this on a whim. I'm a really bad impulse shopper, in case you haven't figured that out. I see shiny things, and for one second, I'm intrigued, and I'll probably just buy it. But I got this game for like six bucks, I think, maybe less. No, this was the three ninety nine one. I paid six bucks for something else. Uh, but I bought half a dozen games at the time. And uh, this one was, um, I bought this with uh, High Noon Saloon. And that one was like six bucks, I think, five or six. And this one was like three ninety nine on sale. Like, they were just clearancing out a bunch of games. And it looked kind of interesting, so I thought, well, this might be a good game for the whole family. Um, so, I don't know, it seemed like a good idea at the time. So these are the pinata ones. And I don't know if these are the plays that you have to make or what. Uh, but everybody seems to be having fun in the images. So I, I guess that's fun. I, I don't know why this girl has purple hair. But I ask myself that a lot. Um, and it is multi-ethnic. You know, uh, there's a black girl. I think the one's supposed to be Asian. Uh, but it's... If I said it's because of her eyes, that would probably be vastly racist. Because I can't tell. She might be an alien, for that matter. Because she has really boogly eyes, like the, those aliens from Communion. And this girl's got a dot on her forehead, so I think she's supposed to be Indian. So they they really went to the uh, multicultural aspect of it, which doesn't seem to be a big part of the game if you're opposed to that sort of thing. And you're sick of the heavy-handedness of that. Um, so it doesn't seem to be anything like that, but, uh, it's, they're just doing it for extra sales, I think. But, yeah, these are real nice, thick cardstock cards. I'm really impressed with that. Uh, so far, this, the quality of the game is really impressive. It, it would have been nice if they had put these, all these things in different bags, though. So, it looks like we got character tokens here. They're the same picture on both sides. And we've got five, eight of them, different colors, and you can tell they're all matching shirts and whatnot. So let's, uh, let's see if this, uh... alright, we've got four double-sided sideboards, one divided into five by five, the others into four by four squares. Scoring frame constructed from four puzzle, or from eight puzzle pieces, my bad. Uh, 48 candies, eight of each color. Green, yellow, white, blue, orange, and purple. I would honestly just play this with Starburst candy. Because then if I win, I can eat a bunch of candy. Uh, eight score markers. One of each color. Ten movement cards. Three scoring cards. Uh, one movement card for little candy lovers. One scoring card for little candy lovers. One rule book. Stickers. Uh, so, uh, I guess these uh, are other cards are movement cards. Yeah, I don't know. Um, okay, it, it explains it. That's what the rules are. Rules for movement cards. Uh, the, the image on there and the little map thing tells you your movement. That makes more sense. I probably should have looked at this a little closer first. But that, that's two pages of the rule book is explaining that what those cardstock cards are for example this one is um which one we got here uh that's labyrinth the candy to be moved can make a maximum of three moves the moves must be made in horizontal or vertical direction not diagonal and must end at the nearest candy or on the side of the board the candy must change direction after each stop which can be in opposite direction of the move just made. It is not necessary to make three moves. 
the active player can choose to make one, two, or three moves. And it gives an example of how to do that. Which is really nice, actually. That's really helpful, because if you don't know um, maybe how that works, you know, the kid's having problems understanding that. It's got a little diagram explaining it. Um, that's cool. That's cool. They didn't just give you a, an instruction. Uh, what's the point of the game? Scoring. Uh, the scorecards which we saw are these, uh, these ones here with the candy backs. Um, there's three of those, or four of them. So, let's see what the scoring is, how, how you win. Uh, there's three different scorecards. Um, scorecard one, the value of the candy depends on the number collected. And that is this one here. Then there's scoring card number two, which is this one. And that is, uh, scores are decided by majority rankings and are given based on the, who collected more of each color. The color is spelled with a U. Aw. <laughs> way, to, way to salute the queen. Uh, scoring card three is this one with the brainiac looking kid, the glasses. Uh, the value of the candies depends on the remaining candies of the same color. And this one is the, um... The kid's scoring card, it's got like a littler kid on it, and it's just basically a two for one. Two color, two of one color for uh, one point. Alright, so it seems like a fairly easy game, and you could play a fair number of people, actually. So, um, that appears to be everything. There's not a lot to it. A little more complex than I thought. A lot at least potential wise. This is a good game for kids. These stickers are garbage though. Uh, the rule books, uh, you do get three languages, but the, the paper quality is only okay. Probably not going to hold up over, the t over time if you're not careful with it. Uh, but it seems like a simple enough game that um, you're probably going to reference it a lot for those movement things, but if you just leave it open and don't put any drinks on it, it should be okay. And you can have eight player or four players, so age is eight and up, thirty minutes. Um, gotta say it's pretty interesting. It's uh, not quite what I thought it was gonna be, but it looks like it's a lot more strategic than I would have expected for a game for eight and up. But that's Pinata Party. Looks like a fairly interesting family game. Thirty minutes, probably worth throwing down. Uh, if you find it cheap, I, I think it might be worth it, but. It would have been nice if the candies, as they're called, the little wooden tokens, had actually been shaped like hard candy or something like that. Uh, instead of just a standard wooden block, that's a little lazy. But otherwise, not bad. Don't feel like I wasted my money. But that'll do it for this episode. As always, thanks for watching, and we hope to see you on the next episode of What's Inside.